mic, please, at the back. And the announcements are? Ready? Yes. <laughs> it doesn't seem like I'm ready. <laughs> oh, the other one. OK, sure. Good start I'm off to here. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So whether you are here with us in the sanctuary or at home watching on Facebook, welcome to Lynn Haven Colony Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. And remember, we say no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are most certainly welcome here. If you're visiting with us today, you can find a card in the pew pocket in front of you and fill it out. If we have your information, we will know who you are and we can tell you about things that are going on, so that's a good thing. In the bulletin, uh, please take your bulletin so and read them carefully. The prayer list, we would appreciate you keeping those people in your prayers. Thank you. Are there any additions right now to the prayer list that you'd like to make? I also commend to your uh, attention, with fall getting started, there are lots of things going on. There are some things you're going to want to put on your calendar in there, I think. So be sure to read carefully through the announcements as well. And Susan Williams has given me an announcement this morning that a number of us met at Harbor Park last night for the Norfolk Tides game. It was a beautiful evening, perfect for baseball and being together. So that sounds great. Yay. <laughs> As the service begins, if you are able, would you please stand for the choral introit? Join me now in the responsive call to worship found in your bulletin. When the pain of a world weary with war and violence threatens my hope and diminishes my belief in the goodness of humanity, help me, God, make room in my heart for you and humanity. When I am asked to forgive another or let go of old hurts that cling stubbornly to my angry self, help me, God. Make room in my heart for you and humanity. When I give undue attention to myself, or when excessive preoccupation with my own schedule tempts me to ignore you, God, or the needs of others, help me, God. Make room in my heart for you and humanity. When the heartache and distress of those dear to me saddens my spirit and suffocates my desire to bring joy to others, Help, Help me, God, God. make, make room, room in my heart for, for you and humanity. Hymn 575. <laughs>
Continuing with a gathering prayer, let us pray. Spirit of the living Lord, remind me that my life with you is most often found in the midst of others in whom you live and move and have your being. Lord, ignite my love. Open the doors of my mind and heart so you can fill the entire house of my being with your all-embracing love. Sail with me, Lord, on the clouds of my uncertainty and stay with me in the toughest of threatening storms. You whisper in the winds of my searching, so silent at times, I wonder where you might be, ever present, ever elusive. I cannot control or define your interacting essence. You continually draw me to your heart with each breath I take. You ask only that I surrender my desire to regulate and manage how you move and reveal yourself to me. Amen. Spirit of the Lord, Spirit, Spirit of our God, hearts, we, we welcome, welcome you into our life. We are Be our beloved companion and steadfast guide. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please greet one another. Share God's Christ's peace. greeting. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. As you see, I got our children's song in the thing, in the bulletin. So let the children come. Come on, children. Let's do the children's talk. Can I do my children's song? No. Oh. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> All right. Everybody look this way. We're going to try it. And I got the congregation helping. So it goes. I don't know what you've been told. Children's talk is right on time. Sound off. Sound off. Break it on down. Jesus loves me. Jesus! Hey! Did I, I heard all of them, but I ain't hear y'all. That's okay. Y'all going to get it. We're going to practice. What? You are looking the wrong way. Good, good, good. I'm so excited. What? A, a real Bible? Chance. Yes. Would you like to see it? No, would you like to see it? Okay. And then Susan, you'll have their undivided attention. Yeah, see, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a real Bible. Amen. Curiosity. That was cool, Luca. I like that. Okay. Oh, okay. Where's your mama So, at? I want everybody to be introduced. Leo who has his first birthday this coming Friday, the 23rd. All right, happy birthday. Uh, oh, all right. Aurora. Luca. Luca. Morgan. Morgan. Tecla. Tecla. Sorry, you're seeing this side. <laughs> Owen. Owen. Alan. Miss Susan. Yeah, nice and loud. Okay, so this morning we're going to continue where Pastor Benita started us last week. Does anybody remember? We had this trifold, tri meaning three. And who can read what you did last week? Sure, care talk, son of God, healer, light of the world, caretaker. That was Wait, no, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so it was Jesus loves me. Do you remember that? And you all know that song, Jesus Loves Me. 
So today, we have the one about love. So I have all of these words. words. And you can choose one or two of them. And these are words that, it, that have to do with love. Okay? So I don't know where I should put them. Maybe you want to put them out for me? Then I don't have to get up again. Okay, just move that one that says cow. We don't need that. That was from last week. Can you, wait, can you spread it? Or Mr. Allen's going to do that. Okay, so when we, when you choose a word, if you can't read yet, somebody next to you or, or somebody who can will read it for you. And then we'll just kind of say what we think it means. Okay, because these are all words that show that someone loves you, okay? All right, so who'd like to go? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Choose one, <laughs> and I have double-sided tape, and I have glue. Okay, which one do you want? It oh. may, maybe you just oh, take it. Okay, so you can sit down if you want, and we'll take your word with you. Okay. Okay, but it doesn't have any sticky yet. Oh, it does? Good job, Alan. Okay. Okay. We'll talk about them after they put them up, I guess. Share. Okay. Okay. So as you're sitting there waiting for your turn, think of a story about helping. Or, or maybe gives. a story where you okay. shared something. Comfort. 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 Jacqueline, you have care. Think of a story about care. Do you want to choose one? Well, just make a statement. Okay. You yeah. cared for somebody. This one Jacqueline. says give. And this one says encourage. Nobody? This one says listen. You want that one? You look like you're a good little listener. Okay. Wait, hold on. There's all the. Oh, teaches is another one. Yeah, so which one? Every single one. Almost every single one's true. Yeah. Yeah. That was the whole idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm Thank you. I'm glad they are. I really. Now we have three more. We could talk about those. Okay, I'm going to go through, and you remember which one you had. Um, maybe you can take one, Alan. Thank you. That's okay. It's upside down. I can see it. But if I go this way. This is nature's? No, it's nurture. Nurture's. I can't read. I can too. I kind of like that it's upside down. I kind of like stuff that's a little upside down. Do you ever? Okay. <laughs> Okay, who had teaches? Okay, Luca, when someone loves you, explain how that's a loving thing to do. I can tell how God teached. Okay. God teached how to be kind, helpful, and also very forgiving. Wow, all those words that, all those words that are up there, too. He took the time to teach, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He was also a carpenter. He was. He was not. He was. Not just a teacher, oh, a carpenter. He was a lot of things, wasn't he? Okay. Basically. Okay, how about somebody who helps? Who had helped? You, I can. Good. I don't want to go in front of Leo because he's so good looking. Okay. He helps the poor and who's sick. He does, doesn't he? He does. And how else? Like, for example, when people love you, how do they help you? They, they when I'm sad, they give hugs. Oh, wow, that's a good one. Okay. Cares. Who had cares? Check one. Um, God cares for us. And what are some examples of ways that God cares for us? 
um, he says right when we're sick or hurt. When we're sick or, when we're sick or hurt. Exactly. Shares. Who had shares? Show his love by sharing. What does he share with us? Or what do people who love you, how do they show their love by sharing? I can, do you want a little time to think about it? Okay. How about uh, comforts? In what way does God comfort you or Jesus comfort you? Uh, or your parents that love you? Uh, <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. How about when you're, when you're sad? When something happens that makes you, that makes you feel sad? Uh, <laughs> Just like in school. Okay. Uh, I'll come back to you, or I'll ask Mr. Allen to do it. How about forgives? Who had forgives? Oh, oh. who had forgives? Did you have, you had, you had lists. That's his also a gift. What is forgiving? Uh, oh, shoot. What was your other thought? Ah, and, uh, okay, we got it. Okay, but when you do something that you kind of feel bad about, do you have to hold on to that forever? What does it mean to ask forgiveness? You say, I'm what? I'm sorry? You got a word oh, out of him. Yeah. You got a word out of him. I'm sorry, and God will forgive us. But one of the things to do is not to do it again, right, if we can help it. How about listens, honey? Do your parents listen to you? I can tell she's a really good listener, <laughs> really good listener. I bet you they do, and I've seen them listen to you, because they love you, don't they? Yeah. They sure do, yeah. And what about encourages? Who had encourages? Mr. Allen, did you have encourages? Yes, okay, so... Um, Here. So God encourages us to do good things, so that we can spread love and happiness all around. Amen. And gives. Who had gives? Mr. Allen. A gift gives. Gives. Oh, so God gives us things. He gives us the ability to um, get up and get moving, to study, to learn and to try and go out and help mom and dad who help us. Thank you, isn't that good? And then one of the last ones is, Mr. Allen said natures, but the word was nurtures, but I kind of like the, um, the connection between naturing and nurturing. And I have here, when someone nurtures you, does anybody know what that means? When someone nurtures you. You look like a very smart child. <laughs> what does it mean when someone says nur nurtures you? Um, nurturing is like the love that our parents give us. Exactly. So I have here something from nature from my garden. Oh yeah. Is that, is that bone meal you have in? No, it's a napkin with some water and it's a vinca plant, but it's not, it's not totally healthy. What's wrong with it? It doesn't get that much water and doesn't have very much soil to live in. Okay, so nurturing means, what did, what did Miss Caitlin say nurturing means? It's like the love your parents give, right? Mm -hmm. So what would you do to make this, to nurture this plant? Maybe water it every day and, and probably maybe put bone meal and like give it some time to sun and I wouldn't water it every day because it can overwater it and it okay. dies. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> but maybe every week, once okay. a week then. Okay, and maybe take off some of the yellow leaves and then eventually 
where would I want, what I, what would I want to do with it? Would I want to keep it in this thing forever? No. What would I want to do with it? Put it in your garden? Yes! Yes! Yes. So God nurtures us. We're kind of like God. He gave us the earth, and he wants us to take care of the earth and to, to try to encourage things and, things and people to grow and be better. And put, and put nice elevator music because apparently I've done an experiment with, like, rock like very loud rock music and and like just nice elevator music and elevator music one. I love it. It's more relaxed. (laughs) You are a natural nurturer. You are natural at nurturing. So God nurtures us. And you know, one of the ways that, that we're nurtured in our faith to learn more about God and to help others and to spread the love that God has for us is to come to church, right? And to, re- and to be with people that feel the same way we do about God and we want to worship him. And so all the ways that God and Jesus loves us, um, we want to love each other, don't we? Because that's what, he, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to share it, right? Okay, who would like to take this home and nurture it? I can find more for next week. Will you be here next week? I got plenty of these in my garden. Okay, thank you, everybody. Oh, did somebody want to do a prayer? Would would anybody like to? Would you like to do a prayer, Aurora? I would love that. Okay. Oh, sorry, I stepped on your foot. Okay. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Please help us to love others as you taught us to love. As you taught us to love. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Lynn. your mom and dad, I am watching them. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. We will now have our scripture reading, Psalms 55, 1 through 3. In this psalm, David prays to the Lord for his presence in difficult times, following a theme there. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I am distraught. Because of what my enemy is saying, because of the threats of the wicked, for they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. In other words, he's he's saying, give me your ear, God. Don't hide because I'm pleading for your mercy. Pay attention to me. Answer me. My cries and my anxieties are overwhelming. The voices of my enemies are paralyzing me. My false friends deceive me. I am giving in to the chaos of the world. Listen to me, God. Listen to me, God. As for me, I call to God and the Lord saves me. 
Evening, morning, and noon I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. My enemies never sleep. They're always up 24-7. They're always bothering me. But God, God has become my savior. God, God hears me. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Here ends the reading. God. Now you're far. <laughs> God will remove the burdens and he will provide for you. He will never let the righteous wobble or fall. And sometimes that is how we pray. We give him our burdens. We expect him to serve us, give us mercy. And then sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. So what is prayerful living? There are a lot of verses we can point to that if believers have faith and make their request to the Lord, he will answer us. We have 1 John 5, 15, Mark 11, and several others, John 16. Some other scriptures say we have not because we ask not. That comes from James 4, verse 2. But obviously, it's not always that simple. Because we don't have, because we don't have, because we still have sick people in hospitals. We still have hunger in the world. We still have homelessness and a host of other struggles and anxieties. Our hopes and expectations are many and also disturbing because all too often our experiences do not match these promises that she just stated in Psalm 55, verse 16. As for me, I called to God and the Lord saves me. We ask, even Christians, we have not been saved. We have not received. I still got problems. At some point in our lives, believers or not, we are challenged by unanswered prayers. Remember that song by Garth Brooks? Dean, can you play that song, Unanswered Prayers, by Garth Brooks? Meditate on the words as you hear it. I would have sung it, but I know y'all didn't want to hear me sing it. <laughs> Just the other night hometown football game my wife and I ran into my old high school play and as I introduced them the past came back to me and I couldn't help but think of the way things used to be she was the one that I'd wanted for all time each night I'd spend praying that God would make her mine. And if he'd only grant me this wish I wished back then, I'd never ask for anything again. Sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayer. And just because he doesn't answer Doesn't mean he don't care Cause some of God's greatest gifts Are unanswered prayer She was 
wasn't quite the angel that I remembered in my dreams. And I could tell the time changed me in her eyes too, it seemed. We tried to talk about the old days. There wasn't much we could recall. I guess the Lord knows what he's doing after all. As she walked away, well, I looked at my wife, and then and there I thanked the good Lord for the gifts in my life. Sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. Remember when you're talking to the man upstairs. And just because he may not answer doesn't mean he don't care. Because some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered. Some of God's greatest gifts are all too often unanswered. Some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. listen to that song, especially older adults can remember some things that we're surely glad that God didn't answer. The song is kind of humorous, but it's actually across many different faith traditions. Practices of prayer connect people to what they perceive to be the ultimate source of spiritual inspirations and expectation. When people pray, they act and express thoughts of emotions that convey deep religious meanings on the one hand and their emotions on the other. Sometimes we approach prayer as if we could fit all the unknowns into a single Bible verse or simple explanation, such as the Lord always answers prayers with either a yes, a maybe, or a no. When we pray, we will have to engage the idea we don't have the whole picture or ability to understand all the answers. So then why should you pray? Engage this thought. There will be nothing more defeating as a believer to pour out their heart to the Lord in prayer and only decide that God just ignored them or her or didn't hear you. So why are prayers important? For many people, simply prayer is communicating with God. Sometimes we cling to the idea in Psalm 55, verse 1 to 3, asking for what we want and telling God what to do. Prayer is more than simply defining it as communicating with God. That's too narrow of a definition. Prayer is important. First, it gives opportunity to build relationships with God and others. Second, it ensures us a closer relationship with God. And three, our prayers reflect God's spirit flowing in the world. God allows us through prayer to participate in his will, both the human will and the non-human world. Non-human world, meaning care and the oversight, for example, of animals, plants, rivers. Building a relationship with God. Prayers act as build, a building block towards a relationship with God. Talking with God is part of what prayer is, as is listening to God. Prayer is an action word showing a dynamic movement in relationship to God and people. Prayer is a call and response. Sometimes God calls and we respond, and at other times we call and God responds in such a way that neither God nor ourselves are isolated in prayer. It is a process. We pray together. 
in a relationship world such as ours, God not only gives to each of us and receives from each of us, but also gives and receives from every element of our surrounding environment. Both talking and listening are part of the conversation. Someone asked me the other day, well, how do you listen to God? How do you know you're listening? I said, sometimes God gives me ideas that I don't, I don't know where they came from. They just came. And I give God all the thanks and glory. And I will tell you this as a personal witness. One time I thought I heard a voice saying, you can stop praying for her now. And I had to jump up and look around. And people, I swear, I, I'm a rational person. It surprised me too. But I still today believe it was God speaking to me. So how often do you pray throughout the day? Or what stands in your way from praying? Remember, as you count, communication does not always have to be verbal. There is also silent prayer and meditative prayer. Think of prayer more broadly as consciously spending time with God. Obviously, we are always in God's presence. Every moment of our lives, but much of the time we are for, focused on other things. We are not deliberately relating to God. Prayer is what happens when we come alive to God's presence. Through prayer, we not only through prayer, we are not only in God's presence, but we know we are. So prayer is consciously spending time with God, consciously relating to God. It may involve talking and listening as we do in conversation, or it may just be involved being aware that God is with us. Like talking, taking a walk with God, neither of us saying a word, just enjoying each other's company. Some prayers will be long, heart-to-heart -heart conversations. That is, after all, how you got to be such good friends with God. But other conversations between the two of you will be on the run, perhaps just a few sentences to check in, almost using the kind of shorthand or, per, or perhaps a, using incomplete sentences between the friend. God knows you well enough to know how you will complete these sentences so you don't have to. Second, the importance of prayer ensures us God is close. Prayer is not like praying to a God that is outside or far away. In the ever so present God, inspiration comes from within, guiding us intimately and personally. While we take responsibility of our own spiritual lives and consider our prayers as personal relationships with God, there is also a process of interdependence on people, families, congregations, communities, the environment, all God's creation and movement within each of these fact are within each of these factors. Bottom line, we are not alone in prayer. Our prayer efforts, to whatever degree, is unique contributions to the ongoing universe, God's universe, God's will. Yes, your prayers is part of God's vision. Consider prayer as being fresh energy into the world, interjecting new possibilities that are both relational and personal. Prayers are not only important to bring us closer to God, but also important to bring us closer to each other. Third, prayers are important because it allows us to participate, as said earlier, in God's spirit flowing in the world. Our personal prayers and community prayers reflect God's spirit moving fluidly throughout the world. One of the greatest challenges of prayer and our limited knowledge as it appears that many of, us, many of our prayers are apparently not answered in any way that we can discern. We are called to pray for our own well-being and the well-being of others in light of the future. Prayer recognizes that we can always pray for a healing, a sense of peace, and wholeness even when we cannot immediately see the change, such as peace or the healing of a loved one. 
we must remember the places where God faithfully answered prayer. God is the one who balances the cries of creation, whether it manifests in the prayers of a dying, of the dying, striving, starving children, or someone looking to make a career change. God invites us to pray for both the large and small things, and then let our prayers flow into the larger ecosystem of prayers contributing to God's own, own activity in the world and situations that we may never be directly involved or encounter. While our prayers do not guarantee that we will always receive the answers we see, we can affirm that our heartfelt prayers will make a difference and will find a response in God's ever-present moment towards healing and wholeness of the world. Prayer acknowledges the interconnectedness of human nature and the important roles that it plays in relationships. Prayer is important because we are meant to connect with each other on an interpersonal and emotional level, and strong and fulfilling relationships help people maintain emotional well-being. So what does prayer look like for most? Well, you wake up in the morning. You may thank God for waking you up, but with God, you think about what awaits you the rest of the day. You pre-live the day as a kind of prayer. At the breakfast table, you open up the newspaper, or maybe you turn on the TV. Another day of a horrific stories from Ukraine or a shooting somewhere in a city, you, sim you simply think, God, be in, the, in that place. Be with those people. That's a prayer. Later you get in your car and the traffic is horrible. So you say to God, the traffic? And you don't have to say that else. God knows the rest of that story, how that sentence ends. By the time you get to work, it's not hard to take your frustrations out on the first person you meet. When you arrive, there is a message from a family member, and before you pick up that phone, you say to yourself, God, you got to help me here. And the day continues on just like that. Remember the boat, how it must have felt for the disciples to be tossed around as similar to our personal lives at one point to another point. Some things you really can't do anything about. Some storms, well, storms come and go. But you now have a choice about whether you ride, where you ride. Is it, be, is it better to cling to on the mast and being whipped around by the storm of life? Or stay as low as you can down in the hold where mindfulness keeps me safe, keeps you safe as the emotions, thoughts, and feelings swerve around watching them come and go in a non-judgmental way, in a compassionate way. It is like having Jesus asleep in the boat with you. The storm is still there, but we find, but we are just fine. And we keep on praying, not only for ourselves, but for others. And that is the importance of prayer. Amen. So let's go to God in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We give you all the glory and all the honor. You are our only God, and we love you. We especially thank you, God, for forgiving us for our inequities. We thank you, God, for making us curious, making our children curious about what is going on in the world and how we relate to the world. Heavenly Father, we just pray that you Continue to hold us, embrace us, embrace our thoughts and understandings, embrace our challenges. We pray, God, that in the midst of the storms, that we stay calm, stay in prayer, and know that storms come and go. We pray for all of those who couldn't be with us here today. We pray for those at home right now, God, sick and shut in. We pray for those who are sick in the hospital. We pray for those, God, who have been ill and who are hoping to heal 
We pray, God, that you are with them at this moment and that their hearts and minds are open to your will, open to your healing. We pray, God, for the doctors and the nurses. We pray that all the resources available is available to them, God, and we pray for their mental, their mental stability as they have de dealt with the coronavirus and other things, God, that keeps them from their families. We pray for our families that have been isolated, our children who have been isolated as now they go off to school, God. So we pray that the schools are having an environment, a learning environment, where our children can just thrive, God, and learn and be curious and learn. Be safe and learn. Be loving and learn. Be kind and learn. Be respectful and learn. We thank you, God, today for this church. We thank you, God, for this church congregation. We thank you for the love and hosp hospitality that they always show when visitors and friends and neighbors come by. We continue, God, to pray for various perspectives as we continue to grow spiritually, grow not knowing you, God, growing closer to you. We pray, God, as a congregation, that we do it together, stay on the same journey, God, and look out for each other, especially in the community of the church. We pray for all of those outside the church, God. We pray for the homeless, the hungry. We pray for the unbelievers, God. We pray for the other churches, God. Even though we may not have the same beliefs, but we have the God, the one God, the only God, and we pray, God, that we can look beyond our beliefs, God, and work together to help those who are hungry, to help those who are hopeless, to help those, God, who are seeking refuge, to help, God, where your will is going. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Does anybody else have any prayers at this time? Yes. Okay. We pray. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, please we welcome the deacons to share your gifts with the church. Deacons, will you come forward?
God, we thank you, God, for not only the financial blessings that you bless this church with, but just all the gifts and participation and people that are part of this church, God. Thank you. Amen. Our closing hymn is Be Thou My Vision, number 595. Amen. So our pastor is on travel this Sunday. He will definitely be back next week. So he's feeling better. Good news. He's feeling better. And next Sunday we will have a guest speaker, Michael. I can't think of his last name. He's Well, good Lord. I don't know. What's going on. Everybody have a blessed week. Be safe.